If you live in Africa, chances are you've seen these billboards. They're advertising DSTV and GoTV, two of the continent's most popular pay TV services. But behind these familiar brands is a company you might not know as well, MultiChoice. MultiChoice is a media powerhouse, reaching over 15 million subscribers across more than 50 countries and generating over $3 billion in annual revenue. But how did this African giant come to be? And more importantly, can it survive in the age of streaming? After more than three decades of dominating the market, the African pay TV heavyweight MultiChoice Group is facing an interesting if uncertain future. MultiChoice Group says profit for the six months ended in September came in lower by 5%. Uh, South Africa's MultiChoice Group has rejected a proposed takeover offer from Bivindi Canal Plus saying the price undervalued the business. To understand MultiChoice, we need to go back to 1976. That's when South Africa, believe it or not, finally introduced television. Yes, the 5th of January 1976 has finally arrived, and with it the birth of a full television service. While other African countries like Nigeria and Zimbabwe had TV in the late 1950s and early 1960s, South Africa was the latecomer to the game. The reason being, the apartheid government saw TV as a threat to their racial segregation policies. When TV did arrive, it shook up the media landscape. NASPERS, South Africa's largest print media company, knew they needed to adapt or risk becoming obsolete. NASPERS' solution came from a man named Kus Becker. Whilst he was completing his MBA at Columbia University, he put together a project paper detailing the concept of setting up a pay TV service in sub-Saharan Africa. Becker pitched this idea to NASPERS. And in 1986, a pay TV service called Mnet was born. Mnet quickly gained popularity with shows like Carte Blanche and the launch of Supersport, Sub-Saharan Africa's first dedicated sports channel. In 1993, Naspers created MultiChoice to manage Mnet's operations, but the real game changer came in 1995. That's when MultiChoice launched DSTV, Digital Satellite Television. It was Africa's first digital satellite pay TV service, and it changed everything. Within two years, DSTV had over 100,000 subscribers across five countries. How? By leveraging satellite technology to reach areas traditional television could not. As MultiChoice grew, so did Africa's entertainment industry. The company invested heavily in producing local content, launching channels like Africa Magic and Channel O. Africa Magic is a collection of channels that broadcast films and television shows produced in Africa. Channel O, on the other hand, is a music channel dedicated to showcasing the top music videos from African artists. These efforts exposed African artists and entertainers to millions of new listeners and viewers. By 2021, Africa's film and TV industry was employing nearly 5 million people and contributing over $5 billion to the continent's GDP. However, the streaming revolution soon followed. Netflix, Amazon Prime and others started making inroads into Africa. In response, MultiChoice launched its own streaming service, Showmax, in 2015. Despite this, MultiChoice has seen a consistent decline in its premium subscriber base since 2021. And that's not the only problem. In the 2023-24 financial year, MultiChoice faced significant challenges their overall subscriber base shrank by 9% and group revenues decreased by 5%. But here's where things get really concerning. MultiChoice declared that it is now technically insolvent. This means their liabilities are greater than the total value of their assets. So why hasn't MultiChoice collapsed? One word, sports. The exclusive rights to broadcast premium sports content stopped many subscribers from cutting the cord. Sports fans are willing to pay a premium to watch their favorite sports teams live on television. But even this advantage is under threat. On several occasions, some African governments have proposed regulations that would require MultiChoice to share its sports rights with other broadcasters. In the midst of all these challenges, a potential lifeline has emerged. Canal Plus, a French media company which controls much of the pay TV market in French-speaking Africa, has increased its stake in MultiChoice to 42% and made an offer to buy the company for over $1.6 billion. If approved, this merger could create a broadcasting giant covering both English and French-speaking Africa. MultiChoice's journey from a South African pay TV pioneer 
to an African media giant facing existential challenges mirrors the broader shifts in global media consumption as streaming services continue to gain ground and traditional pay TV models struggle. The question remains, can multi-choice adapt once again? The answer to this question won't just shape the future of one company, it will influence how millions of Africans access entertainment and information in the years to come. So what do you think? Can multi-choice survive in the streaming age? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more in-depth looks at various stories concerning the African continent.